Have you ever wondered what a leap year is and who came up with the idea? Today, we will explore the mysteries of our calendar system and delve into the concept of a leap year. But before we begin, please remember to hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss out on our captivating explorations of the world around us. Who invented the leap year? Over 2,000 years ago, the Roman general Julius Caesar introduced leap years to the Western calendar. The Julian calendar, named after him, determined leap years with a simple rule. Any year divisible by four was a leap year. It wasn't until over 1,500 years later that the Gregorian calendar was introduced. Why we have a leap year? Typically, our calendar is made up of 365 days, but every fourth year, something unique happens. We add an extra day, making it 366 days. This practice of adding an extra day every four years is what we call a leap year. It's a small adjustment to our calendar, but it greatly impacts our understanding of time. To understand the need for a leap year, we need to understand what a solar year is. A solar year, also known as a tropical year, is the time it takes for the Earth to complete one full orbit around the Sun. Our Earth doesn't perfectly time its orbit to match our calendar. Instead, it takes about 365 and a quarter days or to be more precise, 365.2422 days for the Earth to complete its journey around the Sun. If we ignore this extra bit each year, our calendar will slowly, but surely, drift out of sync with the Earth's revolutions. The seasons as we know them would shift, and over centuries, our calendar will become entirely inconsistent. So, what's the solution? The leap year. But there's more to leap years than just adding an extra day every four years. You see, if we simply added an extra day every four years, we'd be overcorrecting the problem. This is why we have what's known as the leap year rule. Here's how it works. A year is considered a leap year if it is divisible by four. However, century years are a bit of an exception. They're not leap years unless they are divisible by 400. So 1900 wasn't a leap year, but 2000 was. This might seem like a minor detail, but it's crucial in keeping our calendar aligned with the solar year. Without this rule, we gradually drift out of sync with the seasons. Over centuries, this could lead to significant discrepancies. So, while it might seem complicated, the leap year rule serves a pretty important purpose. Being born on February 29th is a unique experience that only happens once every four years. Those who are born on this day are called leaplings or leapers. It's fascinating to imagine being only four years old, but legally 16. While some leaplings choose to celebrate their birthdays on February 28th, others opt for March 1st. Did you know that there are many famous leapers? Believe it or not, numerous celebrities and public figures were born on leap days, dating back to Pope Paul III in 1468. Some of these notable personalities include Ja Rule real name Jeffrey Bruce Atkins, Tony Robbins, and Peter Scanavino, among others. Now, let's sprinkle some fun leap year facts and traditions into the mix. Did you know that the chances of being born on a leap day are about 1 in 1,461? That's rarer than finding a fur-leaf clover. Additionally, in certain cultures, it is believed to be unlucky for women to propose marriage outside of a leap year. This is why leap day, February 29th, is sometimes referred to as bachelor's day or ladies' privilege. Furthermore, the town of Anthony in Texas celebrates leap year in a big way by hosting a worldwide leap year festival every four years. So, there you have it. The secrets of leap years are unveiled. We hope you enjoyed this journey. If you found this video fascinating, give it a thumbs up and share it with your fellow time enthusiasts. Don't forget to subscribe for more captivating explorations on Riddles for Everyone. Until next time, leap into the extraordinary and embrace the wonders of our calendar system.